morning, O-Search is wrapping up its first ever expedition in the Gulf of Mexico. For years, we have followed this group of fishermen and scientists who track and then tag the sharks around the world. We were there when the team made history, catching, tagging, and releasing the first white shark in North Atlantic waters. Jeff Glor was also out on the ocean with the team on its latest trip. Jeff, good morning. Gail, good morning to the Gulf of Mexico has received enormous attention in recent years, mostly for what went wrong, the Deepwater Horizon spill to start. But five years after that disaster, parts of the Gulf are teeming with life, providing OSEARCH a rare chance to study how many sharks are there and where they're going. Yeah, Finley. Yeah. Looking good, old girl. Meet Finley. She's a 10-foot-long tiger shark the first Gulf shark to be spot tagged on O-Search's crab boat turn laboratory. Here it is, Finley the tiger shark, for all of you all to enjoy following across the Gulf of Mexico. This group of scientists and fishermen just wrapped an expedition off the coast of Texas. Chris Fisher is their leader. Tiger sharks, sort of the, the white shark of the Gulf. Yes. And a shark that gets very close to shore. Tiger sharks love to come into beaches and estuaries as well as roam offshore. During their Gulf expedition, OSEARCH tagged four sharks with GPS trackers, two tigers and two hammerheads. They're posting all their data to their popular tracking website. In the process, bringing global attention to a body of water with an often muddy reputation. A lot of people think of the Gulf as a mess, largely because of the spill. What kind of shape is the Gulf in? Oh, I think the Gulf's in pretty good shape. I mean, if you talk to the people who are out there fishing, it's um, rebounding, full of life. And he hopes full of sharks. Remove too many from their natural place at the top of the food chain, and second-tier predators would roam, uneaten and unchecked, devouring smaller fish populations and throwing the entire ecosystem off balance. In the Gulf, O-Search is cautiously optimistic. Finning, one of the biggest threats to shark populations, is not as prevalent here. And over the past few decades, the influx of oil rigs has created just as many artificial reefs. Right now, we are 30 miles offshore. There are about 4,000 active oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. Above water, they are steel, stark, industrial. But underwater, an explosion of life. You also have to keep in mind these oil and gas platforms have been in for decades. No one quite realized how great ecosystems would be formed around them. Greg Stuntz is the director of Sportfish Science and Conservation at Texas A&M in Corpus Christi. We're going to be fishing uh, oil and gas structures that come up out of the water. And are active He's one of the scientists working with OSEARCH in the Gulf. You've been down diving at, at many of these reefs. When, yes. when you first saw one of these undersea worlds, what was your reaction? Well, one, it's just the sheer size is quite amazing. Of course, from the surface of the water, it's flat. It looks like nothing. But as soon as you dive down just a few feet and you see a size of a building underwater, and then, of course, the next thing you see is just the abundance of marine life, particularly fish that are just everywhere. Over time, man-made structures like oil rigs become artificial reefs by attracting an entire food chain. Microscopic organisms, coral, schools of fish, and eventually the lions of the ocean, sharks. They also attract controversy, usually when a rig is retired and a decision needs to be made. Should parts of it stay and be permanently reefed or go? This is a tricky issue, though. I mean, everybody agrees that yeah. there, are, there are environmental benefits to it, but some say, listen, we're against reefing regardless of where it is or when it is because it just encourages the oil companies to drill yeah. more. Yeah. True? Yeah. Well, yes and no. I Many say it's ocean dumping. You're just leaving the trash. But believe it or not, the oil and gas companies don't necessarily want to do this. The scrap value of the steel is worth way more for them to bring it in. A lot of the concern that some of the in the general public or environmental community might have is that it's oil and gas and oil and gas doesn't always have the best um, reputation. Look, ocean first. Great grandchildren first. If you want an abundant future for the Gulf of Mexico, it would be an absolute catastrophe to not reef every single one of those rigs you can. Oh, put on a show. For now, Big Oil's trash is Fisher's treasure. Finley and her friends will provide data scientists have never had where Gulf sharks are mating, breeding, and traveling, what role artificial reefs play, and what threats are real versus imagined. It's kind of crazy to be pioneering this kind of work in 2015. You know, you would have thought it was done a long, long time ago. And it's crucial because we should all be absolutely terrified of an ocean with no sharks. If that is the case, there simply will not be fish sandwiches for our children to eat. 
Boy, I love Chris's passion about this yeah. whole project. Sure. So they've just finished the expedition. Have they learned anything already? There was, so you saw Finley at the top of the piece. They're oh. waiting for Finley to uh, ping in. But their suspicion is that the female sharks, which Finley uh, is, actually stay in the shallower waters, and the males go to the deeper waters, which would potentially put them at a little more risk if they cross an international boundary, mm -hmm. uh, because that's where they might be finned. And how is Mary Lee? Yeah. Mary Lee, the most famous shark that uh, O-Search caught uh, a few years ago, we were uh, out with them uh, off Cape Cod. She has now traveled 24,000 miles in three years. Mary Lee, 3,500 pounds. Uh, she's been up to the New York area before. She's currently just off Cape Hatteras, mm. North Carolina. So who yes, knew you were indeed. a shark expert too, Jeff Glor? Yeah, right. I've learned so, <laughs> I, I've I learned so much about them in the past few years. An appreciation of them. much is going yeah. on. Fascinating. Mary Lee, you can follow her on Twitter. She's very popular. Yes, she is. Yeah. All right, Jeff, thank you.